Mocklins, Mocklins Society. Everything Mocklins represents the problems with Mocklins, what's right with Mocklins, which I don't know if there is anything right with Mocklins. They're really good at, at surviving. I guess that's a good thing. They grew up in, they evolved in harsh conditions on planet Mocklis, which I think actually uh, has created many of the problems we as a human society, uh, quote unquote, uh, in, in the union, uh, have lots of problems with. Because as Ed said, everything the Mocklins are about, uh, their way of life, their culture, just cuts way too deep uh, to the core of humanity. We just, the, what, what Mocklins do does not sit right with us. Um, it doesn't sit right with me. And everyone is now to the point where they think Clyden is a dick. And Clyden kind of is a dick by our standards, but you got to realize Clyden thinks he's right because he was raised by an entire society, an entire planet with thousands upon thousands of years of, of culture being de developed in a certain way. So Clyden thinks we're wrong uh, and we think Clyden is wrong. We know Clyden's wrong. That's the whole point of the creation of Clyden. Uh, Mockless to me, when they were sitting down and Seth was thinking, okay, what do we want this planet to be? Uh, it's a what if situation. What if an entire planet was single gender? What gender? Male. Well, that has a whole other uh, uh, bag of, I'm not going to say goodies, but maybe, you know, a, a poo bag that was left by the door. It has a whole set of problems uh, just being that gender, just like it would have specific problems if it was another gender as well. Uh, so I think they created Mockless to be a representation of what if an entire planet evolved with nothing but a toxic masculinity point of view? And so far, except for Bordis that, and Lokar, uh, that's all we've seen from, from the Mocklin society is a very toxic, macho type of view. Uh, but Bordis has changed. Bordis has changed the way that he was raised. His is the way his parents were raised and their parents were raised and, and the world that he sees around him on the on the planet that he grew up in everywhere not just in certain neighborhoods or certain areas planet wide and he, getting new experiences changed him to be more uh willing to to ex accept uh different types of cultures different types of people or at least be a little bit more uh, uh, thoughtful when, when thinking about what his judgments might be. And I think it really stemmed off of the birth of Topa, uh, about a girl. We get, well, I guess Topa was born in, uh, at the end of Command Performance Episode 2, but at the beginning of About a Girl, we get all the crew giving uh, baby Topa the googly eyes. Baby Topa, who was a girl at the time and now is not a girl or not a female or whatever however you see the word gender because there's a lot of definitions for the word gender nowadays uh i grew up thinking gender was more of a and i still think this is more of a hardware situation and identity is more of identity there's another orville title identity is more of a software uh uh situation and uh you know being kind to other people's software is, is kind of a lesson that we get from the Orville when it comes to Mockless, but also it's a what if situation, just like with sliders. What if everyone was a Nazi? What if this happened? What if uh, washing machines were never invented? I don't know if that was a sliders episode. The final seasons got a little weird. Uh, what if? I love what if situations. My favorite Star Trek's is what if situations. Uh, Riker had a whole relationship with a non-gender uh, character, but there's a lot of what if situations. What if there was a planet where people thought this one person was a god, and that person who's pretending to be a god was able to use technology to make it look like they had powers? What you know? Who watches the Watcher? What if a, an alien that was watching a, a race of people was discovered? How would those people react? Uh, this is the type of stuff the Orville gives us. Think about it. Bordis has probably had the biggest changes, uh, the biggest story arcs. I mean, Isaac had a huge story arc, but really think about the things that Bordas has been going through and the way he has changed uh, 
compared to the way that he was raised. It's something that right now Clyden has not, nothing has come up with Clyden, uh, been introduced to Clyden that can change his heart yet. But I think that Topa will be the one. Uh, I think Topa is either going to find out that he used to be a she. Uh, I'm sure uh, Topa's going to have ideas about that because Topa changed a little bit. Bordas was able to get Topa to soften his heart uh, for a female uh, student in his class. And they started playing. He was being rude before. He learned it from from uh, uh, Clyde and Daddy, Daddy K. But Daddy B taught him to, to really open up and say, hey, people are equal, which is, that's the beginning of the getting that utopian future is everyone start to realize, hey, everyone's equal. Let their actions dictate how you feel about them as opposed to just prejudging people or situations. Uh, start off by being an ally. I don't care what it's for, a person of a different race, person of a different way of life, a uh, person with different beliefs, start off as an ally and let them prove to you that the, you, they d- don't deserve you to be an ally of theirs. But also don't let that single person represent an entire uh, section of the population. Uh, let everybody let everybody uh, piss you off one at a time. That's what I do. <laughs> Everyone gets to piss me off one at a time. Uh, there was uh, a small leak of season three of the Orville of what some of the episode names. Now, I don't know if the episode will still be called this by the time it airs, but there was originally a, a title called A Tale of Two Topas. Uh, but they know everything was, they know that stuff was leaked, so they might make changes. Also, you know, ideas change as, you know, years go by. I wrote it, it was called A Tale of Two Topas, but after making it, I think we should call it this. That's how things go in in business and Hollywood and in anybody who creates anything uh so whatever it's called if they stick with tale of two topas which you know comes from a a novel a tale of two cities um i think that'd be great but it just tells you right there there's going to be a topa episode a tale of two topas we know there's two topas there was the 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 female topa that was born female and then they uh gave the baby which is traditional on mockless because they like to have this conspiracy really uh that there's no female mocklins they're only born every maybe one or two every generation which turns out we're finding out is bs it's a huge cover-up by the entire society and that is something that great sci-fi uh will bring you these topics for you and us to talk about to discuss and make us think about things in a different way uh and and uh give them avatars of aliens so it doesn't get too personal. We can really think uh, and, and keep thinking about it until we can make it personal. Uh, not personal like a personal grudge. Not an action cop movie type of personal. And Clyden was once a female. Which, you know, it's besides having all those biases uh, pumped into Clyden his entire life, being born a female... Uh, and already having all the the judgments that he has about the female gender of all races, uh, he probably is a little disgusted with himself. And he, he acts out even further against the way he was born, uh, almost like a defense mechanism. So that's why it's probably harder to get through to him. But eventually, I think we're going to, I think love is going to conquer all. Uh, whether Topa becomes a female again, just because of some weird space magic or uh, just wants to have a conversation about it uh, and and make a choice uh, one way or the other or whatever. I think if Topa uh, decides to to go back to the way uh, Topa was originally born or whatever, I think love will conquer all and Clyde will say, oh, Topa is now a female again, but I still love her. And I think that would be a great message, but we'll see. The Orville usually finds a way to elevate a message and to make it more, um, so it's not a yes or no answer. It makes you, it usually gives you something to think about. Uh, we'll have to see what happens in season three, but man, there's just so many layers to the Mocklins. Uh, and and 
I forget about it a, a lot. Like I just like, oh, uh, that's funny. They're addicted to, to cigarettes. Oh, porn jokes. Oh, I wonder what a Mocklin Wiener looks like. Uh, where does that egg come out from? And you for, and I forget that there's so many layers to the culture and to the characters. Um, and uh, it just makes me love Bordas even more. Because Bordas is the, is the person who's changing. Who, who's, who's learning things from his experiences. And that's the best any of us can do. If you can learn from your experiences, uh, wow, you are uh, getting a head start on just being a better person. Hopefully you just learn the right things. You know, it's not like, oh, from my experiences, I learned how to kill better. That's not a good that's not a good lesson. Alternate timeline where boy topa meets girl topa. Yeah, I would love it if both topas are represented at the same time and they actually get to interact with each other. And Bordis even in um about a girl was like he was wondering what would be possible for his female child. By, you know, what could they be from their experiences and being who they are? Uh, what would they discover? Uh, what type of person would they be? Uh, he was he was thinking about that in a hopeful way. Uh, but, of course, we don't know what would have happened one way or the other. Female Topa could have just been a jerk. And, and male Topa's awesome. You never know. And that could have stemmed from maybe if, if Topa stayed female, Clyden would have been... A, an extra jerk to her and she would have grown up with a bad attitude. There's so many options and exploring those options uh, is the journey. I think with these, this type of advanced sci-fi, yes, the Orville is advanced sci-fi, the Mocklins, which are the union's biggest provider of weapons. Uh, I think are in trouble this season and uh being in trouble this season because they are the biggest provider of weapons the kalon know that the kalon like if we want to win or or, or uh, against the union we need to take out their weapons supply i think the next huge target for the kalon uh is mockless oh wow they are going to bring down mockless they're either going to destroy it or attack it hardcore uh, the union's going to come to the rescue uh, Mocklins are jerks, so I'm sure they're going to be getting in our way, helping to help them. And uh, I think there's a possibility. I have no idea if this is true, but I think there's a possibility that Bordas could get killed trying to save Clyden uh, or Topa this season or everybody this season. I worry about Bordas. I don't know if Bordas is going to die. I have not seen anything about that except when the Orville wrapped filming. Oh, wow, sweet emotion. Uh, in August, you know, the actors are going back to their homes, stuff like that. But Peter Macon, when he posted uh, that filming's over and, you know, he went home to his family. His family put a little celebration together for him for finishing the work. Uh, but they were saying, saying stuff like when one door closes, another door opens. And he moved to like, I don't know, Georgia or something like that. What if Bordas dies and Peter Macon's like, well, Bordas is dead. I'm definitely not coming back. Uh, but I don't know if that's true at all. That's just me spitballing. So don't take that as news. Take that as JP has got a theory. That's all that it is, a theory. You guys, you're helping to keep the lights on. Christina, thank you very much. David Button, thank you very much for contributing to the light fun like Christina, helping to keep the lights on in the dark. And Mark Lawrence, phew, heck of a day today. Just glad to catch this stream live. So glad that you are here, Mark. Female Mocklins might be hiding a small fleet of ships. Maybe the female Mocklins will have to come to the rescue to help the male Mocklins. And that might... Uh, uh, lead to a unification of sorts. Uh, if anything, this is unification. The two Mocklin genders, okay? It's unification all over again. They just don't have pointy ears. That's the only difference, you guys. That's it. <laughs> oh, wow. No, there's other differences Sweet for emotion. sure. We don't even know how old 
Bordis, or Clyden are. Topa, uh, after three months, when he was three months old, was basically an eight-year-old child. Because of the harsh, harsh conditions of Machlis, uh, they evolved to grow up extremely quickly. Extremely quickly. Uh, just like animals do in nature. Nature animals, you guys. From the wildernesses and zoos of places around this planet. Uh, they grow up extremely fast. Is that Does it stop at the age of eight after three months? Or will Topa, when we see Topa next, be a full-on teenager or a, a, a young adult in the next season? Uh, what's the lifespan of a Mocklin? Sure, they're able to survive harsh, extremely harsh conditions. They evolve that way. But does that mean they have extreme longevity or even a little bit of longevity? Or do they die at the age of 30? I mean, we, we evolved in certain ways, and our lifespan used to be 30 or 40. Uh, what's, what's the case with Mocklins? Animals don't usually, most animals don't usually live that long, uh, uh, unlike humans. Some animals do, but m on the majority of animals live shorter life, uh, life sp have shorter lifespans. Is that the case with Mocklins as well? Uh, or are they extra long lived? I remember when uh, in in the episode uh, about a girl when we're in that courtroom type setup. It wasn't a courtroom, but it, it was a courtroom. It was basically Mocklin Wapner. Uh, I don't remember seeing anybody extremely old. Uh, Havina was meant to be long, was. Uh, we were meant to believe that she's long lived, but what's long lived? On Machlis. Uh she could have been in her 40s, and that's long-lived. That's elderly on, on Machlis.